Hey 3D printing people, Paul here, and I'm doing a follow-up to my Octobuntu video that I did a while back, and here I'm going to show you how to set up multiple Octoprint instances on a Raspberry Pi with very little effort. First and foremost, um, if you're not supporting Gina and Octoprint yet, please do so. She'd love your support. Okay, the first thing that you're going to do is download the Octopi Deploy image, which is here. I've, here's the URL up here, and I'll also put it as a link in the description. Effectively, what this is, is this is the latest Octopi image, so 0.1.18, I believe it is. And I've added some scripts to this to make auto-detection of printers and auto-detection of USB cameras so that you can easily make multiple instances of Octoprint on a single Raspberry Pi. And as you're going to see, this is a really straightforward process. Now, the first thing that you're going to do is download this image, open it up, and on your PC, make some modifications uh, to that image once it's been flashed to a SD card. Um, you're going to make your network modifications here. I'll just go ahead and start making them. Um, and you're going to put your SSID in here and your password here. This is just all normal setup for a Octopi image. So I'm going to put my stuff in here and transition out. And then once you get done with this, uh, you are going to fire up your Raspberry Pi with that SD card. All right, once you have your Raspberry Pi fired up, you're going to use SSH or PuTTY or however you want to do it to log into your Raspberry Pi. And right now we're using the default password. It is a very good idea to change that password immediately after you log in using the password command. I'm not going to do it because I'm not going to keep this image, but you should do that. I will point out that one of the things that you can do immediately if you use the more command is read this readme.txt file that I put in because this has essentially all the instructions and some information that you need to go through this process. Um, I'm not going to read this to you, but I'm just going to follow the instructions that I have here. and I'm going to be just copying and pasting commands in and show you how this works. So first thing we do is we start up an Octoprint server, and this is sort of the, the, the base installation that we're going to use for all of our other Octoprint instances. And then what we can do is once that's started up, we can direct our browser to octopi.local5000. And this will take just a minute to, to come up, but what we're going to do here is basically establish our administrative user that's going to be used for all of our instances and again as I said sort of this base uh, profile so we're not going to do any of this I've already gone through this once so I'm just using my passwords make sure you click create account here and it's a good idea to enable anonymous usage tracking it helps Gina just know how many people are using Octoprint and you can include connectivity check and blacklist uh, plugins uh, and now it's sort of set up with the default printer here you can make modifications here now if you want to we're not going to be setting up anything with the camera at this point I'm going to show you how we can do that later and now we just click finish so you'll notice it has the name instance up here there's a few other things that are going to say instance those are all things that are going to be replaced once we set up our additional images so now what we can do is go back to our terminal that we have here, or our SSH session, and kill that Octoprint server. And I will look at the readme file once again, and it tells you what the next thing to do. So we've killed the Octoprint server, and now we're going to set up our first printer in this case. So all we do is plug in this command here and follow the instructions. So we're using the sudo command, so we need to put in the password again. We are using an Octopi installation, so we're going to put in one here. And now we give it the name of the printer. So we'll just call this printer one in this case. And instead of using printers, I'm using just free printer boards that I have laying around to do this. So, and now at this point, we can pretty much use all defaults. So if we use enter in this case, we press enter, and you can see the port for this instance is going to be on port 5001. And for all of these things, basically, we can just hit enter. Now it asks if we want to auto detect uh, the printer's serial number. And you should do this in all cases, even if you know your printer doesn't have a serial number. And I'll show you why in just a minute. So we push yes here, and it asks us to plug the printer in through the USB into the Raspberry Pi. 
we do that and you shouldn't need to unplug or replug if if your printer is going to be detected it should do that in just a few seconds and now here's where we have an experimental setup where we can check for USB cameras so I'm gonna do that in this case and it tells you to do the same thing just plug the camera in to the Raspberry Pi and if your camera has a serial number that will get auto detected in this case and we're just gonna keep doing the defaults here so our camera will be on port 8001 in this case and we're ready it says write all the changes do you want to proceed we're gonna click yes and as you'll see in just a second, we're going to set up two new services. We're going to set up a new printer service, and we're going to set up a new camera service. And you can see these things right here. And if you do this with a USB camera and you want to modify some of the, um, I guess, the, the parameters for the camera, this is the file that you're going to want to look at and modify. All right, so what do we do now? Now all we have to do is we have to point our web browser at port 5001. That's where we set up this instance. And we now have our login here and uh, our user that we had. This is our admin user. And you'll notice now that this is called printer one. We can now select Octoprint here. We can do auto connect on server startup and just hit connect. And if you'll look here, we now have a printer in the terminal. All right, so what about those, those web cameras? Well, you can do those here in your webcam setup. So what we need to do is give it the web address. So we're gonna, this is gonna be at octopi.local. Uh, we, we said this was on port, port 8001, and we need our action. Oops, action equals stream. And if we test this, what we should be looking at it's working there's our Raspberry Pi and there's the board that we plugged in and so you could save this now and the advantage of this is that that camera will always be at the I'm gonna just go back here to the terminal and go to dev here that camera now will always be as cam printer one that printer will always be at octo printer one regardless of where you plug them in into a USB hub or into the USB on the Raspberry Pi itself. All right, so let's go ahead and go and do this for a second printer, just to show you how fast that this can actually be for doing this. So uh, we're just gonna give this command again. So we're gonna use the Octoprint deploy script. We're doing Octopi again. Um, we'll call this printer two. Uh, one thing that I'm going to do is I'm gonna unplug the other printer first. You don't have to if you have your other printer running. I just only have one USB cable at this time. And we just have to, we're gonna give it the defaults here. So now we're selected port 5002. So that's where our next instance will be. And we'll give it all this stuff. Defaults, we wanna auto detect and we will plug our next printer in. And in just a second, uh, you see that it has detected the serial number of that printer. We're not gonna do any more webcams. I don't have any more to put in. So we're ready to write the changes. We click yes. And now I'm gonna just open up another tab and go to Octopi. Uh, let's see, here's 5002, I already have it set up. We have to log in. If I can remember what password I used. And now here we are set up with printer two. We can do Octo printer two, save connections, connect, and we have our next printer set up. And that's all you have to do. So now at this point you can go through and you can start doing things like adding your plugins, um, doing any other kinds of updating things that you need to do. And I will point out that one of the neat things about this setup is that you can, if you, once you install a plugin on one of these instances, the next time you restart a different instance, that plugin will be available. Or if you update Octoprint on one instance, it will be updated for all the instances the next time you restart. And I have yet to see a case where doing one of those upgrades on a plugin or on Octoprint itself will do any kind of disruption on actively running instances. So you can feel free. I've at least I haven't seen it. If you if you run into problems, let me know. But um, you should be able to do all kinds of updates. And it's only when you restart the instance that the updates will be applied. 
All right, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what happens in a case where uh, a printer does not have a serial number. And so I don't have any of those boards. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually modify the script real quick um, to fail on the detection of the serial number. So where is that? That's somewhere down here. Right, so I'm going to modify this. And it's looking for that in the file. So I'm just changing the name so that it will fail. And we'll run the command again. So we're adding another one. We'll call this printer three fail. Giving it all defaults. Yes, we want to try and get that to go. And I drop the board. So just a second. And this is going to time out in one minute. So I will probably edit this out so you don't have to see the whole one minute. But when you print your plug your printer in here, it is going to detect which USB port it's plugged into. Um, if you have any USB hubs, you're going to have to keep those hubs plugged into the same position on the Pi. Um, and then the printer will have to be plugged into the same position on the hub in order for it to maintain the entry in the UDEV record. All right, so here it's come up. Um, it says the serial number was not detected. And so now we're going to use the physical USB port to assign the UDEV entry. And it tells us where this is. This was at 1-1.3.1. So um, we're not going to do any more webcams for this. And we're going to write the changes. And now our printer 3 fail, which was failed serial number, will be available at port 5003. Log in. And now we can connect to Octo Printer 3 Fail. And we're all set up for that printer. And as long as you leave that printer plugged into that same position, it will always be detected as Octo Printer 3 Fail. All right, that's basically uh, all I have for you. Um, I hope this is a way you'll realize that you can get multiple Octoprint instances very, very quickly. And uh, enjoy.